Welcome to the weekly multifamily roundtable where each week we, Anthony, Dan, and Rodney get together to try and learn something new about multifamily investing. Whether you're new to apartment investing or old and crusty like us, if you're looking to take your real estate investing career to the next level, then you're in the right place. Come join us as this week we set off to learn about due diligence during the COVID pandemic and maybe just maybe have a little fun along the way as well. If you're opposed to fun or learning, Thing, then you best get on out of here because the weekly multifamily roundtable is leaving the station. Toot toot, all aboard. And with that, I defer to you, Rodney. Take it away. All right. So we have <laughs> uh, with us this week, Dax Ferguson from Heritage Construction and Consulting. He does a lot of due diligence for multifamily operators. And uh, Dax, if you go ahead and introduce yourself, kind of tell us where you hail from and uh, what you do, because uh, obviously you do more than just due diligence. So have at it. Sure. All right. Well, I am Dax Ferguson, the CEO of Heritage Construction and Consulting Services. We started in uh, 2011 um, uh, as a company and we started in the single family world, um, you know, doing a lot of uh, storm restoration, uh, you know, roofing and, you know, water breaks and fires and, and all of that. And uh, I dabbled in multifamily a little bit, um, had some customers that uh, said, hey, will you do my roof on my uh, my apartment complex? And then it went from roof to, can you do siding and painting? And sure, we can do it. So we did it for the residential world. It was just bigger than when we did it for the multifamily. And so that kind of morphed over the years. And then in 2015, I made the decision, we're gonna switch the whole focus of the business to multifamily. And um, man, it's it's been a wild ride since then. And um, we started in Texas, uh, we're home based out of Texas. Um, and then in 2018, we really started growing outside of Texas and went to Atlanta. And then um, in, in 19, uh, made the jump to, to go to 10 different states. So now we're pretty much in the Southeast and uh, we cover um, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, and even go over to, to Arizona. So um, I think that's 10 states, uh, kind of lost count, but um, we're all over. Um, with our construction piece, with our due diligence piece, which is what we're going to talk about today, we can actually take that nationwide um, and, and how that works. We'll get into the detail of it and what that looks like, um, but we've kind of done that. But a, a little bit about me, um, I've been married for almost 25 years to the same woman. Um, we have nine boys together, um, ranging from 23 almost to five. Um, and yes, they're both, they're ours. They're, they're none adopted and none from previous marriages. They're all ours. And, um, you know, she's, she's kind of my uh, backbone to how I've got started and pushed me to grow the business and do things like that. So, um, it's been kind of a fun ride with that. And, um, here we are, here we are today. So. So what is uh, the, the due diligence? Um, I guess probably we should start, you know, most everybody that, that listens here knows what due diligence is, but maybe if you could kind of give us a, uh, an overview of what that is in case we have listeners that, that don't really understand what due diligence is. Sure. So um, we have a unit to unit due diligence, which we walk every single unit. Um, and we look at everything from your front door, light fixture, um, flooring throughout, cabinets, countertops, all your appliances. We take pictures of the exterior and the interior tag of your appliance, which gives you the serial number of that. And that may not be as um, critical when you're buying the property, but after you purchase the property, knowing who the manufacturer is, what model number you have, um, if it's a warranty issue on it, you have the 800 number typically to call 
and give them the serial number of, of that unit and say, hey, it's covered under warranty. And then you work through that. And you don't have to go back into the unit to get that, that information. You'll have it in your report. Now, if you're using um, uh, most property management softwares, and I'll just give you an example of one Resmond, you can upload our uh, due diligence uh, software into Resmond and it will go into that unit file. So you look up unit 105, you look, our pictures are uploaded and also the tag is there that gives you all the warranty information and uh, model number of the unit. So it just helps you. Uh, we're not only looking for pre-purchase, we're looking at post-purchase to help you be streamlined as well. But it gives you all the details. And so how we do that is it kind of gives you a tag of if, if this uh, particular item, whether it's an appliance or countertop or light fixture is good, functional, or if it needs replacement. So how we categorize that when we get on property, we'll walk the first couple of units with, with you as the sponsor or um, the kind of the lead on it and say, okay, I know you have an olive green appliance here that's been here since 1970. It's functional, it still works today. Do you want us to classify that as a functional item or as a needs replacement? Because as you go through, are you gonna replace them all or, or are you going to keep it until it wears out and says, hey, I need a new one. And so we kind of classify that with you on our first two and then that's how we'll proceed through the rest of the property. So we're checking for, you know, are your burners working? Is the you know, oven actually heating up? Is your hot water and cold water working on your faucets? Things of that nature so that you can take that information and create your, your plan for your CapEx budget um, or your rehab budget moving forward on, on what you're gonna do to the property. So walking through every unit, we do that. And then we take it from the, from the inside to the outside, right? And so is your HVAC units on the outside, are they R22 or are they 410? You know, which kind of Freon's in them? Um, give you kind of an idea of what you're going to do um, moving forward on your HVACs. Do you have a lot of wood right on the property or does that look pretty good? Is it a newer paint job or do you need to give it a new paint job? So we look at all those aspects and then we categorize them and then you have a full report to know this is what needs to be replaced on the property or this is pretty good shape and we don't need to do much. So I got a quick question for you uh, and then real quick apologize for all the activity there. Anthony had a little technical issue and crashed. So that's I'm just it. trying to keep everybody excited over here when I freeze. <laughs> um, question on the, so the, the due diligence side of your business, which I think is really uh, fascinating. I've never heard about that kind of service being offered. It makes perfect sense uh, with the construction space. Um, you guys are obviously the best ones to provide that to people. Um, you mentioned with that piece, you could do that nationwide, right? Regardless of location. So, you know, for the construction piece, you guys are local in the uh, Southeast, I think you said, how are you guys able to go through and um, catalog everything like that? Like, do you send a rep out to go and do this in person or? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So we send a team um, gotcha. and it's, it's part of our pricing structure. Um, if you give us enough time, it's all included as far as travel and hotel stays and all that. Um, it's about seven minutes per, per, per door per person. So it, one unit takes about seven minutes to do. If I send a team of four, you know, four guys out there, every, all four of them are doing every seven minutes, they're doing another unit and another unit and another unit. So the way we kind of break it up is with a team of four, we can do a hundred units a day. Okay. So if you have 150 units, I'm going to send a team of six, just so we can knock it out and be done, right? We don't have to stay multiple days and, and, and take resources from the property and do that. So yeah, save uh, on the hotel fees and just yeah, save on hotel that. fees and all yeah. that. So you know, sometimes we can drive, sometimes we fly. Um, you know, if if you're asking me to fly to Maine, my pricing structure is going to change a little bit than if I'm going to Alabama, Mississippi, or you know, some closer states. Um, and I need to buy my tickets in advance so that I'm not buying last minute tickets and they're costing a thousand dollars a piece. So that's, that's kind of how we operate it. Um, you know, fee structure on it, just to kind of give you a, a brief understanding. Generally speaking, we're $500 set up for the property and $45 per door. 
So um, outside of Texas, um, I'm going to want 50 to, to 100 doors minimum um, to, to be able to send a team out there. Um, you know, it just depends on where it's at. So it's going to be kind of a conversation we're going to have. Um, you know, I'm doing one next week in Arkansas and, you know, it's $500 setup and $45 a door. And that includes everything but what I need to bring a third party in for. What I mean by that is plumbing. You're going to scope lines for plumbing. I'm going to bring a local plumber in to scope those lines for you. And that fee is uh, $250 per line we scope. Now, I don't recommend uh, from the front side that we're going to scope every line through every building. We're going to do a sampling. About a third of the property we'll scope the lines on. If those are trash, we're going to go, hey, wait a minute. We may need to scope some more lines here because there's issues. Um, if all of those look pretty good, we're going to make the, the general statement that this is the consensus of what we're going to find on the whole property, and we probably don't need to do it anymore. Yeah, that's really great. I, just the back of the envelope math I just did, um, just to kind of see. So you said going outside of your area, you'd want to see at least 150 doors. So if we had a 150 unit up here in Minneapolis at 45 bucks a door, that's 6,700 bucks plus 500 set up. You're looking at 7,200 bucks all inclusive yeah. to get your team out here. That's correct. Uh, I feel like that's a really good deal. I don't think that's very cost prohibitive at all, honestly, for the amount of value we're pr providing. That's that's a that's a good deal. Um, yeah, because I mean, you got to think a 150 unit deal up here. That's you know that's going to be what Anthony like 20 million bucks or something. Yeah, and contrast that with the fact that you're going to have to have your own professionals going through the property anyhow, right? So your architect, your plumber, and all that stuff. So having a one-stop shop that can kind of coordinate all the pieces and come in, they have a lot of experience. So like, you know, banging out a, a unit in less than 10 minutes is pretty, pretty darn quick. Um, I think you'd be hard pressed to find, find somebody capable of doing that. That's not, you know, living the life like that. Yeah. So let me explain a little bit how we did that. Right. Because that's, that's kind of the secret sauce behind it all. We found a um, off the shelf software. Um, I'm, Kind of come from a technology background so i, I kind of know how to manipulate software to create efficiencies so i took an off-the-shelf software went to the developers of it and said hey I, this is good but i want it to be great and can you help me develop it and make these changes and they're like well what are you doing with it and i, I explained kind of my whole vision for what we were going to do and they said sure and so they made all these changes to it and now we have the package right that that we offer and um, I can take a person that really doesn't know a lot about multifamily, but they can turn on a burner and they can turn on an oven and tell me if it works or not, right? So you're not, you're taking away a lot of the guesswork out of it and it's just creating the software and the walk sheets that answers a series of questions that they have to answer before they move on to the next one. And so that's really what's made it so key for us, right? To, to be able to do that and do it anywhere. I'm curious because I'm I'm always a nerd for uh, systematizing things, and it sounds like you've done that in a cool way with the software. Is this the type of thing where your crew is going there with like a spreadsheet, like physical paper that says uh, kitchen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was gonna say, is it an iPad that they're like unit one, all the information, go to the kitchen, check the stove, and then they go to the stove and it has like burner and you know whatever else, and then move on to the refrigerator. And then that's all collated into like a back end spreadsheet that back at the home office you guys see in real time. Absolutely. And so Brad. one of the features that's really cool and, and it's kind of helped us out through the whole COVID-19 deal is we know that some partnerships are kind of scattered, right? They're, one partner may be in Florida, one may be in California and the deals in let's say Tennessee, right? Well, not all the partnership can be there, but during due diligence, they want to be a part of it and they want to see it. Well, what we've allowed to do is you can log in and watch it happen in real time. So you log into the software and we check into a unit and we check out of every unit. So as we uh, leave a unit, 
we hit finish and it uploads it to the cloud. And so the partners that can't be there can watch, oh, well, they just finished 105 and they can see everything that we saw in unit 105 in real time. They can see pictures and then they can ask us questions. Hey, I saw this, can you explain what you're seeing there? And, and maybe in the next units, we need to add another question. And in real time with my team, we can change a question or add a question and then all that question from that point forward will be answered moving forward. So uh, we wanted to I'm make it much user friendly. I'm curious, um, have you guys, do you guys own proprietary rights to that software? And do you guys ever license it out to operators that then just want to have like a template? Cause you know, for this show, I think for it to make it actionable for a lot of the, the individuals maybe watching this is like, maybe we'll go through and talk Hey, what things should we be looking at and how do we navigate that? But a software like that would be, you know, pretty awesome. Just a ready-made software package that, you know, Dan and I could pull off the shelf and walk through a unit and do that with, or is that something that you hold close? Yeah, I hold it close to the vest. Um, just, just for simple fact that I don't own the software and I've tried to white label it personally. Um, they're just not ready to do that yet. Um, and so, um, I'm, I'm holding it close today. Um, I, I can't say that in two years from now or in a year from now, they're, they're ready to let me have it. Um, you know, I've, I've gone as close as far as let me just buy your company. Cause this is exactly what I go. want to do. Um, and, and they're just saying, no, not yet. They're not saying no forever. They're just saying no, not today. So, um, for now, um, I have not allowed anybody else to use it, but my train team and, um, we'll see how that how that is moving forward. So that that kind of there, there hinges what uh, Anthony was talking about into kind of question that I have to, to play the devil's advocate, if you will. So what's the difference between hiring your service? And, and I know because I've had you on properties before, but sure. what's the difference between having Heritage come on and do that versus like Anthony's talking about just you get an iPad and a spreadsheet and you start walking there and do it yourself. Because on the surface, it sounds like, oh, I could just do that myself. So what what would set the, you know, why what would be the difference between me as an operator who's intending to buy a property versus having you on site to do it? So I'll go through a series of um, answers to your question. So um, I've been a part of years back before I offered this service and, and what really drove me to create it, where the partnership would get together and bring in a group of friends, right? And say, hey, why don't you help me do due diligence? And here's a spreadsheet or a checklist I want you to go down. And so you have 10 people with clipboards and, you know, spreadsheets or, you know, one page per, and they're checking off the list, right? Is, is it functional? And, and not always are they categorized. Sometimes are are they there or not? Or are they working or not? Maybe the, the question without different levels, right? Sometimes they have different levels where it's A, B, and C, which is the same thing as ours on good functional or needs replacement. Um, and so the, the sponsor has to coordinate that, coordinate the efforts, but that's all done on paper, right? So you don't have the physical pictures. So ours, um, you're, you're taking a, on average about 40 pictures per unit, right? So you're visually seeing what that unit looks like and what that piece of the, um, of the unit looks like, whether it's flooring or, or if it's um, sink faucets or it's bathtub reclosures, whatever they are. So you're, you're physically seeing it. But the, the next piece you're, you're, you're having to deal with if you do it um, the original way with spreadsheets is you're having to compile the data, right? So you you get all of these different spreadsheets and all these different personalities on their own labeling of it. And you're compiling the data to create one master spreadsheet, which is, which is good. And that gives you your data and that might be free, right? So that piece may be free. However, you're gonna bring in an electrician. You're probably gonna bring a plumber in to scope the line still and do some other stuff. And you're probably gonna bring in um, an HVAC, so HVAC, plumbing and electrical. And then you're gonna bring in a roofer to inspect your roofs. And so you're gonna pay for those services anyway. So there's a cost, um, an additional cost to do that anyway. So it's not totally free. So then you're compiling all of that. 
and then you're trying to get quotes for all those pieces on what it's going to be. So ours compiles all the data for you. And if you're a spreadsheet person, it gives you a spreadsheet. If you're a picture person like myself, it's going to give you all the pictures. But one of the things it's going to do, it's going to give you uh, what we call our uh, cost replacement report, which is going to uh, allocate a cost for those items on what it's going to cost to replace. So if you have a, a, a stove that, that's out, it's going to give you a cost of what it's going to cost to replace it. If you have a light fixture that's out, it's going to give you a cost to replace that light fixture. And so it compiles all that data together and gives you a cost for that. Secondarily, what ours doesn't do on the software side, but what we compile is kind of in your vision casting. So if you're going to do, hey, I want to do a pergola, I want to do outdoor kitchen, I'm going to paint this place, um, you know, I have some wood rot on the soffit, things like that, that we can't cost analysis through this. We're going to give you a quote of what it's going to cost to replace it. We are going to give you a healthy quote, um, and, and Ronnie, you saw this as well. We give you a quote that's going to be over what it's really going to cost you because we want to protect you. We don't, we don't want to say something's going to cost you $100 when, when you go down to it. It may cost you $150, and then you didn't budget for that item. So ours is going to you know, give you a cost that you'll be protected when you go do your negotiations to make sure you're covered through that. So that it, it compiles all that data together. Does that answer yeah. your question fully? Yeah, there's there's a couple cool components there. Dan and I were just kind of talking over here about the fact that the time value alone of having you know a professional crew come in and be able to to crank through that. Where Dan's comment back here behind the the the, the scenes was, it would probably take us way more than even 15 minutes per unit to to get through, which you know we like to be on on the ground and actually walking through the the, the property with the professionals who still have to hire anyway. So from a cost perspective and a time perspective, it makes a lot of sense to, to bring in an external group like yourself that kind of specializes in that. Sure, and and hey, listen, uh, we created it. I mean, yes, there's a cost to it um, and there's a, a cost savings to you guys because of the time investment and things like that, that, you, that it's gonna save you. Um, but we're not doing this to, to make huge money on it. I mean, this isn't going to help me retire any earlier. It's not what we're doing it for. We're doing it for, for one, to help you guys as sponsors go out there and be more efficient and be better. But we, we want to see what we can do to gain your work, right? But if it's in a market we're not doing, we, we understand that that probably isn't the only market you're going to buy. And you're probably going to buy in a market that we're in. Or, hey, if, if we have 10 jobs in Michigan that people are going, we're doing due diligence in and people are going, man, I really wish we had somebody like you in Michigan. If there's enough work up there, hey, I'm not saying I can't go, you know, move up to, not move, but, you know, move an office up to Michigan and, and start an area up there that we can do the work. So it also gives us frontline exposure of where a lot of deals are happening and what makes sense for our next growth pattern and where we're going to go. But it's not, to get rich on it's hey we're going to help you out and you're probably going to talk about it to somebody else because i am a little biased i think it is the best thing in the industry and nobody else is out there is touching us today with the amount of detail that's there mm -hmm. but it's not something that i'm sitting here and foolish to believe that you know people can't do it on their own it's just we're the first to the market that's doing something this detailed and i'm having other people and competitors going hey can we use you guys and sub you out to go do it for us? And I'm like, sure, I'll do it. I don't have a problem with it, but I'm not giving you my secret sauce for you to use it on your own. Yeah. So, so then for you guys, because you're not looking to get rich necessarily off of that service, is it more of the construction side that you want to take a, like be the ones that are doing the projects? And then when you mentioned those 10 states that you're in, are you doing construction in all of those states or is it uh, some of them just a consulting some of them is consulting and the construction or is it all yeah, across the board? I'm doing construction in all of those states and may not be actively doing construction today, but I have or am, am looking um, at projects in those areas actively. So that's that was my expansion to this 10 states. So we're finishing up jobs in Florida and all over right now. So it's kind of crazy. So if we have you come on site to, you know, to do the uh, due diligence on a on a property, you were saying that we can upload that information to Rent Vision. 
But if you're, if we're not using any type of software like that, how would we get the information? Uh, you said we could log in, but is there any kind of, a, is, is that a, is that a perpetual thing? We can always log in and get that or, or how do we retain the information? So my canned answer um, is yes, you can log in and, um, and look at it for a period of time. Um, I have not deleted anyone yet and I haven't had to. Uh, bandwidth is still there. Storage, I'm, I'm fine with all of that today. Um, and I don't know that I ever will have to, but I always put that caution out there that, right, in, in the ones I did in the beginning stages, you know, almost two years ago now, I, I may have to pull some of those down. Um, so I always, that's my canned answer. Um, you can always save it to a PDF and, and have that on file if you don't upload it into your software um, and have that forever. Uh, there is a, you know, Excel spreadsheets you can download. That's easy. Um, but all the pictures and things like that, you can uh, save to PDF and, and save to a file somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I want to I wanna try there. To, to our software and have access to it um, after we're done. Go ahead, Anthony. I was gonna say, I wanna transition a little bit and talk um, from a, like the COVID perspective, what kind of, um, uh, what would you say? Um, differences? Yeah, differences or precautions that you're taking to like, as you're going into these units, what, what, what are some things that, you know, I, I don't think you guys are up here in Minnesota so, um, on projects yet. So I don't think Dan and I are going to be able to use you um, on our next project, right? But so for us, what should we be thinking about as we go into our next due diligence period and to navigate that safely? So here's what we've run into. Um, people, if you walk into a unit and you have a mask on and you have gloves on and we have one glove. We, we look like Michael Jackson. I'll explain that in a minute. But uh, um, people feel like you're taking the precaution. What we have noticed, though, is generally on, on a 200-unit property, you're going to have three to five that we can't get into for one reason or, or another, general, pre-COVID, right? So they've changed the locks, and they don't have a key. Uh, office can't find a key for whatever reason. You have those, and we asked the current property management company to drill those out so that we have access to them, but some people don't feel comfortable with doing it, so there's always a few that we don't get into. What we've noticed is people that don't want you into their property or into their unit, they put a sign on the door said in quarantine, and we don't go in. Um, now, what that's done is taken us from three to five to five to seven. It's not more than that. And, and so not much has changed, right? Just a couple more units that people just say in quarantine and, and we're not allowed to go into their units. But other than that, it's been pretty good. Um, we're, I mean, we're in units every week. I mean, we're doing due diligences every every week we did slow down for a couple of months um while everybody was trying to figure it out but right when it hit right when everybody was um closing down we had a month worth of due diligence that were already scheduled that didn't get pushed so we created a plan for our team and just said hey listen you wear masks you wear a glove um and you have one glove you and the reason is because you have to use your finger for typing in the information on the ipad so we're just extra precautious that we, anything we touch in that unit, we use a glove to hand and then we change out our gloves. And um, that seems to be, uh, make people uh, pretty comfortable. There are some property management companies that go behind us and spray surfaces down um, just because that's kind of their protocol behind us. But uh, generally speaking, it's, uh, that's a rarity. So from so, an operator standpoint, uh, there really is, it's from what I can tell, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of difference between pre-COVID and now as far as the the act of doing due diligence other than the precautions that 
that you're taking on site. Yeah, that's it. Um, you know, if if an if a unit is occupied, um, we go in and do the due diligence. We ask my team is asking that hey, if if you're following, I probably wouldn't go into these units that are occupied as much because you don't want to walk in with five people, right, to the units, um, just because it makes people a little more uncomfortable during this time, even if you are masked and gloved. Um, we say, you want to look at units, we'll call you in if we feel that it's something you need to look at, or let's go into the vacant units to where it's not as encroaching on their lifestyle, um, and just be extra cautious that way. So what are some things that, um... I would that that get overlooked that uh, that you see common that maybe your company catches that that maybe just the standard operator doesn't really think about looking for. Well, so we focus highly on the big dollar ahas, right? That's going to be your your main thing, and I don't think that they get missed. I think the detail of those items get missed. Um, or a misconception with those items um, is changes your view of the property. So I'll give you the, the big items, right? Roofing, uh, plumbing uh, issues, um, electrical issues, and HVAC issues. Those are the big items that are your big, can be your big ahas, right? So roofing, just because a roof is, um, looks a little bit weathered doesn't mean that you have to replace that roof, right? So we do a lot of what we call a walk and seal. So every roof penetration gets uh, resealed, um, any missing shingles um, get replaced, um, and then um, it, it's kind of sealed. Um, if you're in a high hail damage area, we wanna make sure that there's no hail damage on it or it's light hail damage. So that's kind of, kind of how we handle the roof piece. With the HVAC piece, you want to know if it's the R22 Freon or the, the R410. And the reason why you want to know it is because your R22 are going to be your older units and um, Freon's no longer available. It's going to be a higher dollar amount that you have to spend on fixing those units, right? You're going to have to change the Freon out. You're going to you know, change parts Freon. You're going to have to change the oil and things of that nature. So those are going to be a higher dollar item that you need to anticipate um, for for your HVAC units. Um, electrical, um, the the big aha on that is you know is it aluminum wiring or copper wiring? Is it a Federal Pacific panel or slash stab block, or is it your traditional um, electrical panel today? And the reason why that's becoming more and more um, of an issue is. Not only are your lenders requiring you to do certain things, your insurance companies are requiring or excluding um, damages from like a stab lock. Um, and it's, you know, on a 500 page, you know, um, policy you have, you're not reading all 500 pages of it. And you may miss that if a fire happens from a federal Pacific panel, they will not cover it. And if you don't have a great, you know, insurance agent that's reading that for you, you could really get put in a bind um, and get caught that you're not covered properly. And so you got to make sure you know the information and ask the questions to your agent so that you're covered if something like that happens. It doesn't mean you have to rewire the whole place. It may only mean you have to put pigtails on it or you have to change your panels or have a plan to change your panels and and execute on that plan so those are the questions that you need to be aware of but also the questions you need to be armed with to ask so that you are covered in in those from the lender and also the the agency part and then on the plumbing piece you know if you have cast iron it doesn't mean that you have to spend all this money and replace all your cast iron pipes but you need to scope it you need to see kind of what shape it's in and you need a, a plan, a, an action plan on fixing them as you have to fix them. Um, so that's it. And that's kind of where we focus on on those that most people think I got to look at it, but don't know what to do with the detail that they get. Right. So that's that's kind of how I want to proceed with those those pieces. 
other than that, it's going to be your general ideas of flooring and, uh, you know, faucets and countertops and cabinets and, you know, what is your plan to to rehab your unit? You know, um, some some people come in and go, well, I'm budgeting three thousand dollars a unit on rehab and and that should be enough. And I'm like, OK, well, it could be enough. But what are you wanting to do with that three thousand dollars a unit? And um, are you going to do it yourself with with your current maintenance staff or are you going to have to hire out a third party? Because maybe you can achieve those goals with an in-house but if you have a hundred down units, you need to get through those quickly and you're going to have to add a little extra money to, to hire a general contractor to come in and get you up to speed because you, you just can't put all that burden on your maintenance staff because now you're losing rents and that causes other issues. So um, that's my consulting side, kind of what, what I really focus on um, and, I wish I could charge for it, but it's the passion of helping you guys be successful on not screwing yourself when you go to do it and making sure that everybody has a clear understanding of what you're going, what you're going to do. What would you say are some of those fixes that operators go in uh, consistently underestimating how much it's going to cost them to, to make? A, A, A1 uh, cost underestimate is how much it's going to cost to rehab an interior of a unit with a maintenance staff and then secondarily with a GC or a third party, if you will. So I'll give you the scenario, right? So you have a, a 200 unit property and you want to rehab 100 units and you have 40 down, uh, 40 not down, but 40 vacant units, right, on takeover. It's high but you're going to vacate more, right? So you, you have a percentage that you're going to um, terminate leases um, going forward. And so you've gone from 40 maybe to 60. Well, generally speaking, a maintenance staff on that size of property can only handle about three a month um, on, on turning units if you're doing a rehab on. So if you have only three a month that you can handle, and you, you budget, I'm going to say 5,000 seems to be general number of rehabbing a unit of doing floor painting, resurfacing countertops, uh, and making it a make ready for, for you to move in. Well, $5,000 is really good, uh, is, is a good safe number for internal, but now you're going to have to have a third party come in. So you're not losing rents on all those units. And we, as a third party, um, can handle 30 to 40 a month, right? So we're turning we're turning that many a month. So now you can lease out those units and get your leases you're anticipating for your performa. So, but our price, and I'm gonna throw a random number out there, but our price not might not be 5,000, it may be 6,500 or 7,000 to turn it, right? And so it it's a little bit more, but we're hiring the labor to come in and do it. And obviously we don't work for free. So we've got to make a, a profit on that as well. So now you have to work on your numbers. I'm going, well, I'm, it will take me X amount of months to get all of these units turned to, to lease out if I use my in-house staff. But if I hire Heritage to come in or someone like Heritage to come in and do that, I'm going to pay this amount more, but I can lease them all now within 60 days. And that's where you have to run your numbers and, and see what makes sense for you to do to, to make it happen. And I would say that that's the big fall on doing your rehabs and, and getting them there. Does that make sense? Am I clear enough on that to generally give you an overview of how that helps you out? Yeah. yeah. When I've run the numbers on that type of scenario in the past, it's almost always come out to be that it's, it's worth it to spend more to get things renovated quicker than to... Uh, than to sit on the vacancy so I, i've never had the math say otherwise emotionally it might be tough to like pull the trigger if you're working with someone who's an operator that you know maybe the the numbers isn't their strong points like fundamentally it feels like off but when you do the math it's almost always like yeah get it done fast pay more and it's if you can have all those units back online in a matter of of 60 days versus sitting on 40 units over 10 months that that's a huge uh, 
boost to your NOI. Yeah, it's the it's the opportunity cost of you know sitting on vacant units, and that's something that's hard to it's not hard to quantify, but it's something that quite often people aren't considering and then running the calculations on. Yeah, I think a lot of people look at that and they say, "Why would I spend?" Let's say the unit's renting for uh, nine hundred bucks a month or something. They're like, "Why would I spend two grand?" to get that $900 in rent sooner. Like they, they see that, they do that quick little math and they're like, that seems like a bad deal. But then to Rodney's point, you look at the NOI and you know, what's that vacancy actually costing you in the uh, value of your property, right? That's, yeah, you run against that, run that against the cap rate and yeah. it's huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and something work. else that Dax really pointed out that I wanna draw back to is quite often I find people are over aggressive in their assumptions of, how quickly and how many units they can turn simultaneously. So it's, it's you know, you say you have 40 vacant units. It's one thing to say, hey, we're going to do that in three months. It's a whole nother thing to go out and find, you know, the crew that can actually execute that on that time frame. So it's, it's fewer and far between. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and another thing that you're seeing on properties like that as well is, uh, uh, units that are occupied and if you do a um, I kind of do it as a property event and show your current property or, or tenants what you're doing in the new property or the new units they actually are interested in moving to one of the new units at a higher rent um, and staying with the property because they like it there and they see what you're doing they want to be a part of it and so you're getting more uh, retainage on your tenants they're just moving from un, un uh, rehab units to rehab units and so there's that piece of it as well that you have to take into consideration and that that could be used as a tool to uh to raise your noi especially in this time of covid where a lot of people are underwriting uh, stagnant rents and uh, i was reading an article by ellie perlman and she uh, instead of coming in and, and doing these uh, renovations and then looking for somebody to uh, rent it. She did more of a, a rehab on demand approach. And she, and like what you're talking about, Dax, she got people excited about having a, a new fresh unit and overwhelmingly those people elected to move to the more expensive unit. And, uh, you know, despite COVID and a lot of people with their flat growth were able to increase NOI in, in, in the, the economic times of current. Hey, you want a, a real golden nugget to, to tag along with that. Um, I'm seeing this be very successful. You, you have a performa to raise rents, right? In, in, in this new property, I'm whatever property, but tenants are, are, are wanting to stay and you can't move them out, but you need to raise their rent. And let's say your rent bump is going to be $200 just because I'm going to use round numbers here. And, and they're like, man, I, I don't justify, you know, raising rents $200 and the unit's going to be the same. I'm not going to do it. What you can do is go in and say, ma'am, I'm going to change your toilets and give you fresh toilets in your unit and I'm going to give you new lighting fixtures um, in your unit and we're going to do all LEDs in your units and inst- but I'm going to give you all of this new stuff um, and it will it will freshen your unit uh, and I have had an overwhelming response on people going, you know what, that's fair. New toilets, I don't have to deal with this grungy old toilet that's been here for 10 years you know, before me, and I'll have brighter light fixtures in here. Yeah, I'll do it, I'll sign up, I'll pay $150 more a month, and I have some new things in my property. You don't have to go in and replace the flooring necessarily. You don't have to go in and repaint the unit, which are high cost items for you, and you're reaching almost what you, you you perform it out when you did, you know, when you did your due diligence on the property and you're not spending all the rehab dollars, you're just changing, you're spending some of them because you were going to do both of those anyway, you're just not spending all and you're getting most of your rent increase anyway. So we're seeing that be a great success in a time like this as well. You said earlier that uh, you usually need some notice so that, uh, which we understand, you know, 
the cost of airline tickets and things like that. If somebody was going to have due diligence, you know, what, what is the lead time on getting you guys on site for something like that? So I like to have two, two weeks if I'm flying far, right? So I can, I can have um, time to get the plane tickets, get everything set up. It's not always a luxury, but I like to have that. Um, I would say if I'm flying, I need at least a week um, so that I can definitely keep the, keep the uh, ticket price down. And then we have to set it up in the software, right? So you, you dealt with it, Rodney, on your, your property where we did it. You have to fill out an um, Excel spreadsheet building. You know, are they on first floor, second floor? Um, what unit type are they? Because that helps us give you the best output on, on, your, um, on your software or on the spreadsheets and things that you're looking for at the end. Um, so if we have all of that data, information you can drill down okay so how many of the two twos are vacant today right because that's one of the questions is it vacant or occupied um, or how many of the three twos are vacant today so that you can make some business decisions um, based on the need uh, of the community um, or you know what kind of you can drill down the information so we need at least a week um, I'd like to add Ask for two weeks. Um, I have also window here. Um, I only have uh, four days. Can you do it in time? And I'm like, sure, uh, we can do it. If it's close by, we'll make it happen. If our schedule owns teams uh, now so that we can split them up and um, create more teams and we're cross training so that uh, we're, we're readily available to do more at one time. So kind of give you an idea. Well, we are uh, getting close to the hour here. Do you guys have any more questions that Dak hasn't already filled us in on? I don't think so. I think um, uh, I'm really glad you were on tonight because I didn't know that what you did was a thing officially. I thought, um, you know, having the inspector come out per usual and getting some vendors out to do some duty items for me uh, was, was about as good as it got. I didn't know you could almost outsource it entirely which is fantastic and not so much for like outsourcing the process of the physical due diligence but more so just having it so organized and cataloged i think is really attractive um regardless of whether you have the ability to do it i don't think anyone's going to do it as, as systematically as you unless they're like a, a really large operation that's been around for a long time and they have some really robust systems so i'm probably going to call you soon yeah, I guess that's my question is, when are you moving to Minnesota? Like, yeah. w when are we getting an office up here? Well, remember, I have nine kids, so I'm not moving there. Um, and uh, that's, a, that's a huge move for us. Well, the 23-year-old is um, probably about to want to relocate and open up an office for you, right? I mean, that's his, his yeah, plan. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I had some of my boys work for me uh, for a period. And um, today, they no longer work for me. Um, and yeah, and you, do your own good. Thing. Um, it's good to be their dad and not their boss at the same time. So um, I wouldn't yeah. say anything happened necessarily. It was just, um, it, it makes it much more enjoyable when they're around at home because uh, we don't talk work. We can just talk uh, family stuff. So that's good. Um, I, I would encourage anyone, you know, anyone of you, but anyone listening as well, watching, um, it is, I can show you the spreadsheets um, and take you through the detail of them. And it would be easy to do a Zoom call to where, you know, we just sat one-on-one -on -one and I, had, I showed you what the spreadsheets look like and how you can drill down and get through that. That's probably the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and don't wait until you have a property to do it. I mean, feel free that, you know, I'm, uh, I or one of my team are available to, to have that Zoom call with you and show you what it looks like and, and kind of drill down with you. I would encourage you to do it sooner than later um, to do that. But I, I would like to highlight a couple additional pieces that um, we offer with due diligence um, that, again, even more make us stand out um, than the other guy. We are not a foundation company. And um, I'll, I'll never say that we are. We look in our report for evidence of foundation um, issues. 
but we have purchased and we travel with it with a due diligence team, um, a foundation level. So we'll go around and we'll see if it's level um, or not and tell you, hey, this one's pretty off. Um, you can't only feel it, but you know, it's off three inches up or down. Um, and you really wanna have somebody come out of here, engineer come out of here or a found company come out to do it. Um, and, and we do that at no charge. Um, it's just really to help you have more ammo to know because getting an engineer or a foundation company out there to walk every unit is really tough to do. Um, but if you know there's an issue, you can go back and go, look, I need an extension and here's why. And you have some valid information there. A couple of other things we do. We do um, a software, we do a 3D uh, virtual walk around on every building and you can have access to um, 3D image, so rooftops all around the sides um, of, of a building or of a couple of buildings on the property that when you're going to go to the rehab and you want to change the color, you can actually from the software, from the 3D image, change the color of the paint scheme, change the color of the roofing, and it helps you make a better educated decision on what you're going to choose for the design aspect of the paint scheme um, and things like that. It. So, we offer that. That's $100 a building. You're only going to do a couple of buildings so that you can make an educated decision on that. Um, and it gives you a really cool tool to show to kind of your LPs on, hey, this is what we're going to do to the property. This is what it looks like now. This is what it's going to look like uh, moving forward, just to give them some visuals, because visuals are great for these guys. And then um, lastly, an another uh, uh, piece that, that we offer um, is you have um, over Grand Central and um, Matterport. And if you don't know what Matterport is, 3D walk through of what the units look like. Um, and you can turn 360 from any spot. You think, well, why would you want to D-class properties, um, B minus C-class, that you can look at from that property? And so what we do is we take our Matterport camera and we can film each unit type, and then we can order a, you can have a dimension floor plan as part of your, however you're going to do your marketing. And so you'll have those on, uh, on takeover and you can market that way. So it helps you lease better, helps, you know, furniture placement and things like that. It's it is marketing and do the full 3D walkthrough. Um, I wouldn't recommend to do an occupied or a, an unrehab unit, but um, you'll have that data to, to use and move forward. So. Now you were saying that uh, you, you don't, are these offices that you have in the 10 states, those are for your construction side of things. Uh, yeah, does that, that mean you had said that you could do 50 states. So uh, if Dan wanted you to come up and do due diligence in Minneapolis, you certainly could do that, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I can come do due diligence up there for you guys. Um, now, one of the things that we have up here are boilers. Do you guys uh, have any, do you guys run into any boilers? boilers. Or? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, on our boilers, one of the things that, you know, we're, we're really particular about is taking a picture of the tag. So you'll know the date um, of that boiler when it was manufactured. Um, and then we're looking looking for issues with the boilers, right? A lot of, a lot of issues with boilers are really evident um, just by the naked eye. You're going to see that there's an issue or a lack of maintenance on that boiler. Um, and if you're not maintaining it, um, you're you know, you're going to have an issue here in the state of Texas, and I'm assuming it's all 50 states, um, you have to um, annually have that boiler inspected by a county inspector, but every two years by a state inspector. Um, and so if those tags aren't present on your properties, it raises a red flag for us that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing and that you're going to have issues with your boilers. So you look at those kinds and you ask for that data while you're there as a due diligence team, we ask for it or we go, hey, we need you to ask for this and get this as part of your due diligence. So you know, kind of
thing was up speed on this and then moving forward you'll be there oh still there I see you moving now yeah you kind of locked up a little bit on us there dad see sorry yep interland or something i was telling dan i thought that was me <laughs> no i think it was me so i just i everybody froze i'm like hey where'd everybody go so <laughs> um, did you hear about asking for the inspections and moving forward on that did you yes. get that part okay yep we did yeah. okay great well if uh if people want to get in touch with you dax can you tell us how to get in touch with you absolutely so email um is is always great and my email is dax dax at heritage ccs like cat cat sam dot com um email me there um and and i'll answer your questions there um, i'm one of the crazy people that still give out my cell phone because i do still answer my cell phone so um, you can reach me there at 469-261-1190 and um, if i don't answer i'm in a meeting or on a podcast or something and uh, I'll return your call um, after I'm done, or you can text me and um, I'll reach back out to you as soon as I can. We appreciate you coming on and taking the time to tell us and impart all your wisdom to us. And uh, we uh, wanna close this one out. Uh, is there anything we need to say, Dan and Anthony, before we give them a please subscribe talk? <laughs> No, that was awesome, Dax. I really uh, appreciate you being here and, and sharing with us what you do because it's like, you know, Dan and I had never had no idea that there was a service comparable to what you guys are offering. And it's, it makes a lot of sense. Well, you've never met anybody as cool as me. So that that's the problem there, right? Well, that goes without saying. I, <laughs> you're the, you're, you are the only Dax I know. And that's a cool yeah. name. So you like go. already you're, you're elevated in my book. I appreciate the opportunity. I, I do. I do know a Dan, which is only one letter difference, but we all like, know a Dan. That's, we all know a Dan. <laughs> when you throw an X on the end of that, it does it's way cooler. It ups the cool factor for sure. That's it. That's Can't it. argue with that. All right. Well, with that, uh, I think we're going to wrap this one up. We thank you guys for listening, and if you would do us a favor and give us a rating and hit that subscribe button. We would really appreciate it. And next week, I believe we have the one and only Logan Freeman coming on. Ooh, that's going to be a fun episode. He's got to step it up so that he can outdo his, uh, his partner from, yeah, from Parker, last week. Yeah, exactly. Parker, yeah. exactly. All right. I'm going to, awesome. with that one, we are out of here. <laughs>